In recent months, we've seen a seismic shift in the state of global geopolitics, which have forced Western powers to reassess their influence, particularly in Africa. We have witnessed many of these countries recognizing the critical role played by Africa's abundant resources, and aware of China's growing influence and Russia's expanding presence on the continent, European officials find themselves at a crossroads, strategically maneuvering to protect their critical foothold in the region. Ursula von der Leyen's offer to be a friend of Africa, made during the summit, received an unexpected setback when it was met with a resounding decline. Despite von der Leyen framing the proposal as a way to amplify Africa's voice on the global stage while also acknowledging the continent's vulnerability to climate change, the reception was skeptical. This turn of events raises serious questions about the efficacy of Western efforts to maintain influence, as well as highlighting a nuanced geopolitical landscape in which historical alliances are being critically evaluated. The rejection of this diplomatic outreach marks a watershed moment, implying a more complex geopolitical reality. It suggests a shifting paradigm in which African nations are asserting their autonomy and forging a path independent of historical ties. Von der Leyen's proposal, which was likely intended as a gesture of collaboration, has inadvertently become a mirror reflecting the changing dynamics of global power. This episode emphasizes the importance for Western powers to navigate diplomatic complexities and recognize African nations' agency as they navigate a complex geopolitical landscape. While in attendance at the Climate Change Summit, European Union President Ursula von der Leyen expressed a commitment that went beyond mere attentiveness, saying, Today, I'm not only here to listen to you, but also to offer Europe's help at COP28 so that we can work together on all of the issues on the table. This proactive stance represents a departure from traditional diplomatic norms, emphasizing collaboration between Europe and Africa on pressing climate change issues. Von der Leyen emphasized the two continents shared this development comes in the aftermath of the Africa Climate Change Summit, which was held in Nairobi, Kenya, in September last year. Recognizing the critical importance of adaptability in this rapidly changing landscape, EU President Ursula von der Leyen sought to strengthen diplomatic relations with Africa. Her emphasis on collaboration in dealing with the urgent and far-reaching consequences of climate change sheds light on the complex interplay between diplomatic strategies and the common challenges that African countries face. As Europe navigates this diplomatic crossroads, the unfolding story reveals a profound understanding of Africa's role in the geopolitical arena, as well as the critical importance of forming resilient alliances in the face of shifting tides. Concerns, despite apparent differences, and the universal commitment to addressing climate-related issues. Instead, they focus solely on getting their plans and ideas across to Africa. Even when things look bleak, they always have deals. And as everyone knows, these deals always favor Europe over the other continent. She stated that Europe stepped forward as Africa's friend at the recently concluded COP28 meeting in the UAE. Ursula von der Leyen's offer to be a friend of Africa, made during the summit, received an unexpected setback when it was met with a resounding decline. Despite von der Leyen framing the proposal as a way to amplify Africa's voice on the global stage while also acknowledging the continent's vulnerability to climate change, the reception was skeptical. This turn of events raises serious questions about the efficacy of Western efforts to maintain influence, as well as highlighting a nuanced geopolitical landscape in which historical alliances are being critically evaluated. The rejection of this diplomatic outreach marks a watershed moment, implying a more complex geopolitical reality. It suggests a shifting paradigm in which African nations are asserting their autonomy and forging a path independent of historical ties. Von der Leyen's proposal, which was likely intended as a gesture of collaboration, has inadvertently become a mirror reflecting the changing dynamics of global power. This episode emphasizes the importance for Western powers to navigate diplomatic complexities and recognize African nations' agency as they navigate a complex geopolitical landscape. It contains the majority of the world's important natural and economic resources. At this point, if African leaders are having difficulty communicating their ideas and views on the global stage without the assistance of Europe, which many regard as Africa's adversary, it begs the question of whether they are qualified to lead.
Africa is not dependent on these countries because it has abundant resources and a diverse range of countries. It should not require assistance from other countries, particularly in Europe, to make its views known around the world. If there is a need to collaborate to get African voices heard, it should come from a source that shares the region's interests and values, rather than Europe, which has a history of exploiting others. In a moving speech, European Union President Ursula von der Leyen echoed African leaders' sentiments, recognizing their primary focus on economic growth and poverty alleviation. President Rudeau and dear friends, we hear you when you say that Africa's top priority is to grow its economy and lift as many people out of poverty as possible, she said, aligning with the continent's pressing concerns. Von der Leyen's words emphasized a critical realization. Climate change mitigation is an essential component of Africa's economic development strategy. She emphasized Africa's enormous potential, citing an abundance of green energy and clean hydrogen, valuable raw materials, breathtaking natural beauty, wildlife, and a vibrant young workforce as critical components in the shared pursuit of a sustainable future. The call to action went beyond continental borders, emphasizing how Africa could play a critical role in cleaning up global energy systems and supply lines. This envisioned partnership, she argued, is a symbiotic relationship that not only empowers Africa, but also benefits the larger global landscape. The prospect of expanding Africa's clean energy industry emerged as a standout example, with von der Leyen claiming that such a move would benefit the continent economically, while also propelling the world toward faster adoption of solar and wind power. The discourse resonates as a call to collaborate, envisioning a future in which Africa's potential serves as a catalyst for positive change, both within its borders and on a global scale. Africa could create twice as many jobs in the energy sector in just a few years. The region could also produce enough clean energy to power itself and export to other countries. And you can see that African leaders are very interested in addressing climate change, but it is not their primary goal. If we look closely, we will see that the West is the primary cause of today's climate issues. Even though Western countries have been involved in environmental issues in the past, now that they have developed, they want developing countries to prioritize fighting climate change over economic growth. As previously stated, the West's actions demonstrate that they do not care about Africa and are only interested in themselves. This is similar to what Nalady Pandor stated earlier this year. Developed countries have failed to keep their promises to the developing world, and they continue to blame the global South. To stop using coal, reduce emissions, and address climate change, you must complete steps A, B, and C. These people have grown over thousands of years. We need to start growing and meeting their needs right away. Ursula von der Leyen's description of her proposed win-win partnership suggests that it is a win-win deal for Europe rather than everyone else. People claim that Africa has plenty of resources to deal with both poverty and climate change. If this is the case, why not prioritize these resources to address these issues in Africa? Why can't these issues be resolved to a reasonable degree in Africa first before attempting to expand to other parts of the world? African riches have to be used to benefit others first. Why can't the world, particularly wealthy European countries, work together to lift Africa out of poverty when Africa has made such significant contributions to Europe's growth? That being said, Europe does not want that kind of response. Instead, Africa appears to want to remain poor. One example is how abuse appears to begin with the promise of giving Africa money to help. A large amount of money leaves Africa illegally, such as when Western companies fail to pay taxes on every dollar sent as aid. This reduces the benefits intended for Africa. Now pay attention to the next section of her speech. She stated that climate action has the potential to be one of the primary drivers of African growth, but it will require massive investment. And Europe wants to help you close this investment gap. This was to demonstrate that Western assistance and investment in Africa is not what we think it is. First and foremost, we agree that international development banks must be reformed. Now it is time to put our words into action. Wow, truly wow. She stated that they had been talking non-stop for years without doing anything. I will tell you what else. These comments are also empty words designed to persuade Africa to give in.
Von der Leyen emphasized her point even more by saying, we're not just interested in getting resources. We also want to work with you to create local value chains and good jobs in Africa. We would like to show you some European technology. We want to help people in the area improve their skills. This is critical for young people because the better you perform as suppliers, the more Europe will shift its supply lines to Africa, making both of our economies less risky. We aren't just interested in extracting resources, those words say it all. She emphasized the main point of her speech, which was that Europe's primary goal was to keep Africa as a source of cheap materials and raw materials. Their proposed partnership, she explained, is intended to continue exploiting the African continent, and they remain focused on extracting African resources. Any other goal appears to be a side goal that will receive little attention as long as Europe has easy access to resources from Africa at a low cost. When Europe and Africa work together, they are unable to assist each other. Even though Africa has a lot to offer, in order for there to be a genuine relationship, Africa should be able to set the rules, not Europe. It's easy for countries like China, Russia, and others to match or beat what the European Union thinks it can give Africa. This von der Leyen speech and the recent things that European countries have done say that Europe would be nothing without the riches that come from Africa. What do you think about this? Tell us in the comments. Thank you for watching. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe as well as the notification bell if you informed when we post a new video.